Okay, let's talk about the SSAT, and this is not to be confused with the SAT test. The SSAT is the Secondary School Admissions Test, and the one we're going to be talking about is the upper level, and uh, more specifically, we're going to be talking about the math that you may very well may encounter on this test. Uh, so, if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing to take the SSAT upper level, um, so that's excellent, and you're looking to get into a school. So before we get uh, going any further, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school uh, math teacher, but uh, over several years I've constructed um, many online math courses. I actually offer an SSAT upper level math prep course. Excellent, very comprehensive. I'll leave the uh, link to that in the description. Uh, of the video if you think you may be interested in checking that out. But uh, what I really want to do is talk about um, kind of the math that you're going to be expecting on the SSAT um, upper level. So uh, pretty much I would classify this as high school level mathematics. Okay, so that's where you're kind of, um, you know, should be targeting, see how well you are in algebra, geometry, amongst other topics. So, you know, um, this particular problem here should be something you should be able to handle uh, pretty well if you expect to do well on, an SS, on the SSAT upper level uh, math section. So, uh, of course, I'm going to solve it for, uh, for you, but I want to give you a chance to go ahead and uh, go ahead and work on it. So if you have a piece of paper and pencil, you might want to pause the, the video and give this a try. And I'm going to explain it to you. So we want to, what I want you to do is to evaluate this expression. All right, so it's x cubed minus x squared over negative x for x having a value of negative one half. So I would say that um, many of you out there are going to look at this problem and be like, oh, I know what to do and, you know, be confident about it. And then in the end, very, very well may not get the right answer. So I'm kind of warning you a little bit to take your time, be very patient with it and work the problem out. Uh, because there's only going to be one correct uh, answer. So go ahead and give that a try, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and solve it. Okay, so hopefully you um, you know worked this problem out, and if you didn't, no big deal, but you want to use this as an indication of, hey, you need to do some, uh, you know, a lot more uh, study before you take the SA SSAT upper level. But let's get into it. So evaluate means we're going to take this value of x, in this case, it's negative one half, and I'm going to replace all these x's with this fraction, and at that point, I'm going to go ahead and simplify the remaining expression. So let's go ahead and do that. So x cubed is going to be the same here as negative one half cubed minus negative one half squared. Okay, this is my numerator here, and that's going to be all over negative of x, okay, or the opposite of x, and x is negative one-half. So this is the setup here. So before you go any further, let's just make sure that you set up the problem correctly, okay? So we're plugging in negative one-half everywhere we saw the x, and this is the correct setup. So at this point, this becomes like a basic arithmetic problem, but we have negative numbers and powers and fractions, complex fractions. So I'm kind of testing your... Um, ability to work with uh, arithmetic. Okay, so let's just take it nice and so. Now, if you didn't, if you were confused on how to set up this prompt, but you think you can, you know, at this point you think, oh, okay, now I know how to do it. You should always pause the video and see if you can go ahead and finish it up. But now let's go ahead and work this problem out. Okay, so negative one, let's work, first of all, let's go ahead and first work on the numerator and then we'll deal with the denominator down here separately. Okay, so let's get a value for the numerator. So negative one half cubed, what does that mean? Well, that's gonna be negative one half times negative one half times negative one half, right? So you're gonna take negative one half and multiply by itself three times, and this is going to be what? So I'm just kinda of asking you questions. Hopefully, all of you out there said this is gonna be negative one eighth. Okay, now I don't wanna over teach this, I, this you know video, I don't wanna make it any longer than it needs to be. But if you didn't, uh, if you don't understand why this is negative one eighth, uh, clearly you got some work to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and put negative one eighth here. All right, so that's what this turned out to be. 
minus negative one half squared. Okay, so negative one half squared is negative one half times negative one half, and that's going to be a positive one fourth. So let's leave that right here, positive one fourth. And now let's go ahead and just kind of simplify this denominator just a little bit more, then we'll get back to the, the problem. So the opposite of negative one half or negative of negative one half is simply going to be a positive one half. Okay, so if you're with me so far, that's excellent. And now let's go ahead and continue the problem. Okay, so I have up here negative one eighth minus one fourth. Let's go ahead and deal with that now. So I have negative one eighth minus one fourth. So what do we have to do here? Okay, well, I'm going to have to rewrite this with common denominators, right? So I'm going to have to multiply this by two and this by two. So hopefully you are um, uh, comfortable working with fractions, as you should be definitely. If you're taking this test, you need to definitely be comfortable uh, working with fractions. So I'm going to have negative one eighth minus two over eight. Okay, so we're really kind of taking our time here because it's so easy to make a mistake. So now I have common denominators. So this is uh, eight as our common denominator, and we're going to be adding the numerators. So this is going to be negative three eighths. Okay, negative three eighths. So that's what our numerator turned out to be. So we'll write that over here. Negative three eighths. Whoops, write that a little bit better. And I'm going to be dividing that by one half. All right. Okay, so that's where our problem stands right now. If you want to write this down, uh, you can go ahead and pause the video and write this down if you're interested in doing so. So let's go ahead and erase this and figure out the rest of this problem. So we worked on the numerator, it turned out to be negative 3 eighths, and I'm dividing by this denominator of 1 half. So what's that mean? Well, negative 3 eighths, what this is saying is negative 3 eighths divided by 1 half. Let's write it this way. Negative 3 eighths divided by 1 half. Okay, so this is how we're gonna get our final answer. So if you know how to do this, go ahead and do this now. All right, so hopefully all of you are saying, oh, okay, this is negative 3 eighths times, remember I flipped this fraction to the right, that's gonna be two over one. So this is going to be negative six over eight. Of course, I can reduce this fraction down. Uh, two goes into both of these numbers. So this would be negative three over four, okay? So this is our final answer. And if you got that, that's excellent. That's very good, actually. But if you made a little error along the way, but you're like, oh, I know what I did wrong, eh, you know, that's that's not so good. Okay, even if you know, <laughs> even if you recognize what you did wrong, the name of the game here, what I was really kind of testing you is the uh, is your ability to focus and work a math problem down. Okay, like your, your habits and how to manage all the steps and all the little details in order to figure something uh, like this out. Okay, the math is really not all that advanced. But, you know, it's very, there's a, so many places you can make a mistake. And that's kind of what this um, uh, particular problem is testing. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up. If you got this uh, right, that's excellent. But by no means does that mean you're totally ready, you know, for the SSAT uh, upper level uh, test. It just means that, hey, you did a good job with that. If you didn't do well, don't beat yourself up. What you need to do is just, you know, come up with a game plan to study for this thing. So at the time of this video, I've been on YouTube for a good 12 years. I literally have hundreds and hundreds of uh, math videos on my channel, many of which will help you for the uh, on the SSAT, upper level math uh, section. So hopefully consider subscribing. If you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, you know, is this your first time taking the test? Uh, I'm not actually, to be honest with you, I don't even know if you can take this test more than once. I assume you can, uh, but any feedback would be good feedback. Um, and then again, I'm going to go ahead and leave the link to my SSAT um, upper level math prep course. Super comprehensive. All my courses have taken me actually years to build. So it's a really powerful math course. I'll leave the link again to that in the description of the video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in, on, in terms of what school or schools you're applying to. Okay, Just remember, 
Everyone can do well. It's just a matter of how much time and effort and how intelligently you study math. Okay, You want to have um, a good study program to study with, and then you just want to put the work in and effort and build your skills up. Okay, So even if you're struggling or you're not confident, you can get yourself to that point where you can do really well. But it takes hard work. Okay, But I wish you uh, all the best. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.